in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so I'm hoping that within the few minutes we'll have to share that God is going to expand someone's understanding of God so that it will swallow away the doubts, the unbelief, shut down the voices that the devil may, has, may have, you know, declared unto you that you are now receiving anything that God did not say is a lie. The definition of a lie is not an untrue statement based on anything. It is what God did not say. The moment God did not say it, it is called a lie. Are we together? So the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Men do not have to be wicked to be liars. Is that most people do not have the power to make what they say come to pass. That's what makes them liars. God cannot lie because he has the power to make anything he says come to pass. So if God calls you lifted, that statement can be a lie if he does not have the power to sponsor that statement. The reason why we say God cannot lie is not that God does not lie. He cannot lie because the power component that insists that he remains true still resides with him. So before God makes a statement, there is already the power component to insist that what he says comes to pass. Is that not powerful? So if God says you are lifted, regardless the surrounding circumstances, there is an ability within him that when released can veto the, the circumstances and insist that what he says is what happens. This is very, very powerful. This is what I believe about God. Please pay attention now. There is nothing you cannot do. Help me. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. So tonight, very briefly, journey with me to the school of faith and let's look at a few things that the Bible has to say as we brace ourselves to see the God of all possibilities work wonders in our lives in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. This was a very interesting statement. Jesus was rebuking the rich in that statement and he said it, it is easier for um, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed. They said, who then shall be able to make it and get into the kingdom of God? And Jesus beheld them, the Bible says, and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. He says, but with God. How many things? All things. Prophesy to every situation. Say all things are possible with God. One more time, say all things are possible with God. Second scripture, Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. I like the way Paul puts it. Paul is mentoring the church in Corinth and here's what he says. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things which are unseen. And he gives the reason. He says, for the things that are seen are temporal. The word temporal means under a certain condition, it is subject to change. Not under every condition, but that no matter what happens around a man, under a certain condition, it can change. Hallelujah. It says, but the things...
things that are not seen are eternal or permanent this is a very powerful statement that everything you see the moment it is visible paul says it can change everything so he's saying do not allow the things around you to affect your faith he says because there is a possibility in the dealings of god with man that anything that is visible can change this is very powerful visible there does not just mean objects it also means conditions and situations is someone learning already that any condition provided it is manifest in this realm paul leaves us with an assurance that under a certain condition it can change so the question is not whether my life can change the question is not whether my situation can change the question is not whether things can change it is for me to find out by the spirit the condition my assignment is to search for the condition not to debate about the possibility of the change poverty can become prosperity listen carefully sickness a sick person weak and beaten down by infirmity can become a healthy person the bible is full of these conversions for instance he turned water to wine is that in your bible even satan believed that all things could change he asked jesus to turn stone to bread satan the one oppressing you already signed it as a witness satan participated as a witness that things can change and he said jesus we are both aware that things can change use that ability to turn stone to bread if water can turn to wine if stone can turn to bread look up please if a barren woman one moment can become a joyful mother is that true the last enemy that threatens men as far as this earth is concerned is death and even that last enemy the bible says that victory has been wrought over it oh death where is your sting he says and oh grave where is your victory are we together while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal i'm starting on this note it's important you may not know how but you have to come to a point where you settle that things can change that means this version of me that means the challenges that stand before me the mountains that stand before me under a certain condition my assignment is to show you that condition hallelujah even in science they are already simulating scientific and climatic conditions that can make things happen from a scientific standpoint is that true science has been able to simulate the womb of a woman so that they put seed in a in a medium that resembles the womb of a woman and as far as the growing baby is concerned he is in a womb because they have reproduced that environment and the baby does not know the difference between the real womb of a woman and that object of experiment because they have mastered the art of creating the condition my first word for you tonight is all things can change under certain conditions not under every condition a jobless person can become an employer of labor under a certain condition look up please a sinner beaten down by a life of sin and defeat and satan can become a fiery preacher of the gospel like saul under a certain condition the bible is full of stories of before and the after version of men and situations and what you should really study is not just the men but study the conditions that midwife that trans that conversion most people study the stories but they never pay attention to the condition what made water become wine what made the leprous naman to become one who was healthy the possibilities are there but the secret is in knowing the conditions there are conditions that midwife miracles there are conditions that midwife supernatural manifestations what kind of condition was created 
that turned Samaria within 24 hours as a place of poverty and penury and need to a place of abundance. What kind of condition turned Egypt, I mean Israel, the Israelites, from people who were afraid of themselves to those who were singing songs of victory within a short time? Is someone learning? What condition turned a Pharisee who was persecuting the people of God to become the chiefest of the apostles? What condition turned a weak young man called Gideon to now become a mighty valiant warrior? What turned a man called Samson as a great and a strong man to become a weak man in the hand of the Philistines and to turn back to become a strong man that killed more people in his lifetime. Things can change. Hallelujah. Things can change. Your pain can change. Your sadness can change. It's even in your Bible that you have turned my mourning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow into joy. So settle it right now that what you see is waiting for you to initiate a condition and it will begin to change sometimes overnight. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no, There's no mountain you, you cannot, cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop doing it now. Are we still together? Remember, we're in the school of faith now. So Paul is saying that anything you see that is manifest can change. Watch the wonder even in the kitchen for women who cook. It is amazing how you can carry all kinds of ingredients and sometimes what you take in does not look like what you take out because a conversion happened. Sometimes it will need fire. Sometimes it will need refrigeration. You're, you call yourself a chef because you have mastered the art of simulating conditions. Conditions that produce outcomes. Are we together? A doctor will look at a patient and say, okay, we see. There is still a way around this. There is something we can do concerning this. And he now begins to introduce a condition. For some, the condition may be surgery. For some, the condition may be a bypass. But by all means, he can use even a scientific means to restore. Many of you have used the GPS system. Is that true? And sometimes, all you need to do is to plot where you are and where you need to go. The moment you feed the destination, it is the assignment to now begin to route roads. And sometimes in routing roads, it can meet a point where maybe the gate is locked and whatever it is, you will never find it complaining. Immediately without wasting time, it begins to reroute and tells you, well, there may be an extra 15 minutes, but I have found another way. Let me prophesy to someone, regardless what the devil has done, in the name of Jesus, we come by the God of all possibilities, that God himself is turning things for your favor, turning things for your favor, putting laughter in your mouth, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. The jobless situation that is seen is temporal. The barrenness situation that is seen is temporal. Dear man of God, the limitation in ministry that looks as if you've not, make, you've not made your calling and your election sure is temporal. The financial situation that has brought you shame and reproach, temporal. The indebtedness, that situation is temporal. The bankruptcy of the anointing upon your head and your life, temporal. The child that is making you to lose sleep, temporal. The condition remains 
until you find out what it takes to change it. Journey with me very briefly as we walk with the spirit through the school of faith to learn how we convert things, how we convert pain to testimony, how we convert darkness to light. There is a spiritual system of conversion and this is what I want to show you. Are you ready? Ezekiel 37. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll start from verse 1. Ezekiel 37. Now, there are not many times in scripture where we have a direct mentorship session as far as faith is concerned. There are many of these instances, but two of them are most striking in the Bible. One of it is this scripture where the Spirit of God took the prophet and began to school him on the restorative dimension of faith. He did not just teach him about faith arbitrarily. I mean, he taught him faith with instructions and as he obeyed, he saw the result there. Another instance was found in Mark 11 where Jesus used the story of the fig tree to begin to teach them directly on faith. Hallelujah. So in Mark chapter 11, he used faith to destroy something. In Ezekiel 37, he taught how faith can rebuild back and restore. Are we together? Now let's look at Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Take note now. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Verse 2. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, the Bible says, they were very dry. Now look up please. Is it not interesting that in schooling and teaching the prophet, the spirit of God does not hide the fact that there was a situation. And the Bible describes the situation in detail. Faith does not negate what is the current state of things. I mean, it was God, God did not pretend as though it was not there. He caused him to see everything right there. Took him to a valley and he described by himself that the valley was full of bones and that the bones were very dry. Looking at the reality of what is on ground now is not faithlessness. The foundation of that school is admitting what the current state of things. When you admit the current state of things, it is not faithlessness. It is admission that now opens you up to receive the grace that converts. Now, many, many people in a bid to be people of faith do not acknowledge the reality of what is on ground. So they cannot even release their faith for a miracle. When the Bible shows the converting power of faith, it first reveals the current situation, whether it is sickness. It, the Bible does not hide the current situation. If it does not reveal the current situation, you will not appreciate the conversion and the miracle. So do not feel bad that your issue is a rent issue. Acknowledge that there is an issue here, but faithlessness there is when it now comes with hopelessness. Provided you know that the God of all possibilities is there, you can acknowledge it is true that my womb has not taken a seed yet. It is not lack of faith. It is true that I have bills to the hundreds of the thousands and the millions for my children. It is true that I may not yet be in my house right now. Is someone learning now? It is true that as it is right now, they diagnosed a situation in my body that is in need of a miracle. So the, he's cooling him here. And the first thing was to reveal the true state of the bones. And the Bible goes meticulously to tell us the bones were very dry. Meaning they had been there a long time. Many people are not able to seek help. Many people are not able to release their faith. Because... They feel that when they admit and they acknowledge the current state of things, 
it is a sign of lack of faith no no when Jesus came to the earth he revealed the current state of man's sin he did not hide it he did not just look at us and say everything no he revealed it that there was a problem but that I have come that ye may have life is that true yes he caused me to pass round about and behold why why would the Holy Spirit make him to first look at the bones he would have just created an army and say well these guys were dead before now they are alive there was something he was teaching the prophet he made me to pass around it is true that I went around and I looked at my bank statement and I saw that there was nothing it is true that I I saw the medical report I went to the hospital and they tested me and they said there's something wrong but it does not stop at verse 2 let's go to verse 3 it says and he said unto me son of man this is the question now can these bones leave you have seen it you know this situation connect with what i was teaching you that paul said do you agree with me you may not know how it will happen but do you agree that this is a temporal situation even though it has been there for a very long time and do you know what god did not punish the humanity of the sincere prophet he said god i am i am in the vision i am with you but sincerely with respect to what i have seen only thou knowest hmm. is someone learning now that it is it is not unusual that there are times even as a believer you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of the situations around you you know it's easy to just comment on things when it does not happen to you by the time someone is told that you have cancer and it's stage three stage four it's easy for an onlooker to say just believe but there are times the real answer is not yes the real answer the believer's answer is Lord this one is only your realm of reality that can answer it as far as I am concerned as a Nigerian as an African living in this day and this time in light of the wickedness that surrounds our world in light of the prejudices only you can answer that question is someone learning There are situations that can overwhelm men and overwhelm their lives. Bring them to points where they literally, even as a man of God, there are times that you can be so overwhelmed that you do not even know where will these bills be paid from. After teaching so much on faith, then you go back and it's you and God. Read what Moses did. When the people stood in front of the Red Sea, Moses calmed them down and said, Listen, these Egyptians you see today, you will see no more forever. Then he went to God and was crying. Give us Exodus 14, 14. Please give us Exodus 14, 14. Let me show you something. Okay, let's do 13 and 14. <laughs> Are we together? Help me please. Now, Moses is encouraging the people in verse 13. Fear not. Who is speaking? Moses. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians whom you shall see this day, you shall see no more forever. Say amen. amen. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. What a courageous leader. And ye shall hold your peace. Shocking. Go to verse 15. The Lord now said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? After encouraging the people, after declaring as a leader, now it's not pretense. I am just telling you that there are realms where you are overwhelmed. The man was doing the, the needful that leaders would do. Calm them down. Speak words of faith. And then he went and said, Lord, 2.5 million people are at my neck. I don't know what to do with this Red Sea. I have been able to calm them down. And God was telling him, did you not believe what you told them? The Lord said to Moses, it's in your Bible. Wherefore criest thou unto me? 
Do you not know that what you said was not a lie? There is a condition that can pass the Red Sea. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, is No one like you. No one like you. No one like you, You're the God of everything. No one like you. So, just like Moses, Ezekiel is shown a a valley full of bones be very fair on Ezekiel I know you feel like a man of God but do you know what it means to be full of a valley with no living thing only dry bones you are the only living thing walking there I have an idea because I've been kept in a mortuary before to raise a dead body and I was the only one alive in that mortuary no 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 I'm not I'm not lying if I'm joking I'll tell you I'm joking and they had to close the door so that you know I was praying you believe God Abi? <laughs> hallelujah I remember when I got in there to pray for the, the body that was dead and there were many I stood there I mean the body was like stone I didn't even know what part of the body to touch to pray I consider myself a man of faith and here I'm in a room that I'm the only person alive in the name of Jesus Christ come back to life absolute nothing in the name of Jesus come back to life after three times I use the opportunity to start thinking about my life I said my God all these people were once alive Lord, help me to live a fruitful life. At least so I don't waste that time. And after a few minutes, they had to knock and say, look, it's, it's against what we do. You have to come out here. I went back and it was not whether the body came back to life or not. So don't blame the prophet. That's what I'm trying to say. Imagine that there were bones. This whole auditorium is full of bones and you are the only one. We don't know how long he walked seeing the bone of a child seeing the bone of an adult seeing the bone of one who probably was a professor before seeing the bone of one who was vibrant and then a voice comes son of man can these bones leave it was such a truthful answer please god don't ask me remember you are god and i am a man remember when it has to do with this one oh lord thou knowest you are the only one because I am so overwhelmed by this situation. How are you going to pay the house rent? The situation where you just lost your job. There are times that the correct answer is only thou knowest. But now let's read further. Is someone learning? Verse 4. Again he said unto me, For as long as as you have admitted that you are incapacitated then you must be ready to obey me you have acknowledged that the knowledge of the conditions to change anything resides within me that means from now henceforth it will be stupid for you to doubt me you have said only thou knowest so the one who knows is about to instruct you now you must be apt to obey do not trust your mind when it has to do with this because you have admitted you don't know. Now the one who is all-knowing is about to instruct you and he said prophesy. He never said gather the bones. The logical thing to do is to gather them. But he said from where you are, even without a direct contact with the situation, he said prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, Oh ye dry bones, call them by name. Don't say, Oh ye bones, describe what you saw. Oh ye financial situation, oh ye cancer, don't say, Oh ye bodily infirmity, that's grammar. Oh ye dry bones, call it by the name you saw. He said, Hear the word of the Lord. 
listen if you call the situation and stop there it's called lamentation but if you connect the situation to the word of the Lord it is now a manifestation of faith ah this issue of my bill that is lamentation but when you now say hear ye the word of the Lord the moment you bring the word of the Lord over that situation is someone learning so the next time you cry don't stop at describing the situation he did well by saying oh ye dry bones oh ye barrenness situation if you stop there I repeat you only lamented but when you connect it to the word of the Lord he said hear ye the word of the Lord a powerful revelation here that everything on earth even what we call non-living thing do not lose their ability to hear the ability to hear is not lost even in death this is the revelation here are we together now that everything you see animate or inanimate sustains the ability to hear no wonder the day Jesus comes at the blast of the trumpet even those who are dead will hear is that not in your Bible so we do not lose our ability to hear he said he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith." that condition has been designed with an ear there is an ear that is waiting for a prophetic word hear ye the word of the lord it says verse 5 thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Verse 6 now. It says, And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath, it says, in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. He now told him what to say. He had revealed the condition for the change. It was up to the prophet to believe. Do you know the bones never change as God spoke? The bones only change as the man repeated what God said. God was speaking and the bones acted like they did not hear. But he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. And behold a shaking. And behold a shaking. I like this and bones came together look at the precision bone to his bone bone to his bone naira to its bank account precision destiny helper to the one he should help as i prophesied there was a shaking it was not a random shaking let me speak to someone in the name of Jesus, I command bones to be joined to its bones. Listen. Please make sure you are not distracted. I'm showing you a very deep spiritual mystery. Otherwise, you will live a very defeated life. Son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can this situation leave son of man can this health condition be averted and he said only thou knowest he said now i want to show you something prophesy you see acknowledging the current situation is sincere but not enough even expressing your humanity in terms of your pain and lamentation over that situation may be sincere but that's not what brings the conversion the moment you begin to partner with god that is when the miracle begins the miracle began when the word of the lord came the miracle did not begin when the lamentation continued are we together now it says bones hear ye the word of the lord and he began to speak now prophesying there is not just about speaking in one word it is obedience because he only prophesied because God asked him to prophesy. In the case of 
the nation of Israel in Jericho, they were not asked to prophesy. They were asked to go around. So the most important component is when you stand before limiting situations, it is not just about speaking. The concept there is whatever he tells you to do. do. There are times that in the midst of lack and defeat, that all you have left is a morsel of bread and water and God will say, take from it and feed the prophet. That is the miracle. Now, that, that does not make sense under that condition. But this is the God that we work with. Somebody say obedience. obedience. Shout it, say obedience. obedience. Can I tell you, the moment you find yourself in a difficult and a negative situation, attempting to suggest a solution will only prolong your pain. Let me repeat it. Attempting to suggest a solution will only prolong your pain because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof. So you will journey in error and confusion and after multiplying your pain, you will find out that you've added to the loss. You've added to the pain. The Bible teaches us here that the moment you find yourself in an unpleasant situation, stop acting until the word comes. Whatever you will do to secure a word from God becomes your bailout system. Moses understood this and he said, Lord, we are not living from here. I know the, the tragedy that will befall us. Joshua, can you imagine that these guys came to defeat Jericho? The Bible talks about Jericho. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, please. The Bible talks about Jericho. Look up, please. That Jericho was shot. Nothing came in and nothing came out. The fence of Jericho could host five chariots. And you want to come and fight such a people? Study the security architecture of Jericho. I've read it. You read, read Joshua chapter 1, 2. And you will see the, 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 the security masterpiece. That when the spies came in, they smuggled themselves to meet Rahab. And with precision, the news got to the king. And said some people had come here. Look at the kind of security architecture. These are the kind of people you are coming to defeat. Not without a divine strategy. Is someone learning? And Joshua remained helpless, remained like a fool until the captain of the Lord's army appeared before him and he said, let me give you a strategy. Here is the strategy. Circumcise the men first. You are not going to carry that impurity and go to bring down Jericho because what you see as a physical sense fence is shrouded in a lot of spiritual mysteries you will need that circumcision so that your partnership with God can be in place and he circumcised the men and then a strategy came what was the strategy you will go around Jericho look at how stupid imagine you have a leader leading you I hope you know that thing was not a parable it actually happened one day on earth that mighty warriors were led by a man who claimed he had God and he said this is what we are going to do seven days we'll go around and just watch them going around and people in Jericho were saying what is wrong with these people they won no noise for the prophet he said prophesy for this one he said go around the most important thing is to hear what he says to do don't assume because you prophesied yesterday that's what he's asking you to do today you must wait to hear what he says are we together it is by that power of the prophetic that god brought you to this solution arena and they went around seven days and then the next instruction came now you are going to go around seven times and after the seventh time you are going to shout don't fight shout and the bible says after seven times they shouted the word tehillah the shout of the king and the bible says jericho sank it didn't fall it sank by what architecture, by what mechanism, ladies and gentlemen, did a physical building sink down? 
like an earthquake just like that the god of all possibilities but you see if you were asked can jericho fall your answer would be like isaiah 37 god with this kind of architectural masterpiece only down no west can i tell you the moment a situation looks too difficult to fight physically it means physical strength is not what you will use to defeat it are we together Naaman was in a situation the bible calls him the captain of the syrian army he was a valiant man in war but the bible says he was leprous one of the slave girl that they caught from israel came to serve his wife and one day she said oh that my master would go to so and so a prophet and he will be cleansed from his leprosy and the king wrote a letter and when they got, they took it to Israel. They said, you see the trouble? These people want to create an opportunity to come and fight. And when Elisha heard it, he said, let the man come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. When he came, he did not even come out. He sent Gehazi. He said, go and tell this man, go to Jordan and watch seven times. And the man was angry and said, Where well, are there not other rivers that are cleaner and neater? He said, that is your business. If you are interested in the cleansing of your leprosy, I have given you a word from God. And the lady encouraged the man and said, please, why don't you go and respond so? And the Bible says he went there. The instruction was seven times. If he washed himself six times, he would still go back leprous. The Bible never said he was improving with every bath. Even at the sixth time, he was still leprous. It only when your obedience is complete. He said having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. And he came out the seventh time. And the Bible says that his skin was like that of a baby. How about Jesus Christ teaching his disciples and the tax collectors came to embarrass him and say you claim to be a righteous leader and you're defaulting in your tax. Isn't it amazing? This is a powerful revelation. Every time you are serving God sincerely, the devil will use finances to want to come and embarrass you. Jesus is teaching and here comes the tax collectors to embarrass him in front of his audience. And Jesus said, no problem. We will give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Now we're in a tight corner. There is a need for a miracle. But I'm the God of all possibilities. Ordinarily, you should not get a coin with a fish. But because I am the God of all flesh, go to the sea. Catch any fish, provided it is the first. Open the mouth. You will pick a coin out. Now, listen, that is not how to get money every day. But with respect to this situation, the God of all possibilities can bend laws to bail you out. The way to get it every day is wisdom. But that there are times you don't even have that time. The way to eat bread is to go to the farm and be patient and farm and wait for harvest. But there are times you will need manna from heaven immediately because you will have to survive. The one who gives increase to your harvest and supernatural supply of prepared blessing is still the same God. Is someone learning now? Yes. And they removed the coin. And they paid their taxes. And that was it. Let me tell you the truth. Provided you are alive. And you live in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear me. You will be confronted with situations sooner or later. Personally or corporately that will stand before you as a mountain you must master the system of converting negative things that you see to become testimonies and realities many of you here probably may have been shielded by the faith or the responsibility of others so you may not have been exposed to a situation that needs you walking your own faith a day will come you are the one who will go around a valley and that valley will be full of bones and god will say now your pastor may not be here now the one who helped you may not be here you must learn how to hear god and you must learn how to obey somebody shout obey obedience say it again say obedience the difference between people who continue to wallow around in failure and others who seem to be excelling unusually and supernaturally i submit to you is the word of the lord
this is what makes a difference that for others they have mastered the art of staying till his word comes because making costly assumptions saying all kinds of things and doing all kinds of things I repeat will only multiply your pain for someone you are in a financial situation just getting up to assume that I need to start a new business quickly to pay my debt you may be in error you have to go to the one who knows and stay there and pray and travail the first thing that happened to the prophet was that he was in the spirit not in the flesh that kind of solution does not come in the flesh he took me in the spirit of the lord you must be positioned same thing happened to john john was caught up in the spirit every time you are in the spirit solutions come did you hear what i said every time you are in the spirit solutions come lord how is it that this this business is not working. How is this that my life, I, I'm colliding with tragedies from pillar to post. There must be a way out. Now our generation calls shutting down laziness because we are used to activity without divine direction. That is why we keep doing a lot of activity with no constructive progress. Our fathers of old will mark time sometimes for one month hearing God, but when that word comes, they run at the speed of it, an arrow. It is a tragedy that most people do not place value on the voice of God. Are we together? Shabakatos kiata. Lord, there has to be a way out. What is the next direction for ministry? What is not, not I know what to do. Common sense is wonderful, but it has landed many people in trouble. I know what the next business idea will be. Lord, I submit to you. You are the one who knows the next 10 years. I am limited. Even though prophetic, we see in part and we prophesy in part. You are the one who knows. And he can say, do you know what? Begin to connect with this gentleman. This one that looks like he will not rise. This guy will be the next voice you are hearing in business, in ministry. And you will take a step that does not make sense at the moment. The wisdom of your obedience will unfold as time passes. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.